What's going on, y'all? My name is Joltage, and today we're back. I'm bored. I feel like giving you a bit of a recap for the first two weeks of LCU action for LPL8. I'm going to start off with the first game of the season. This one was between Kip, former tier leader, um, still great LCU player, and the hero of LC, Jocks. Um, this game, I'll be honest, had me flabbergasted. Um, very interesting way this turns out. You see they both brought pretty interesting teams. Uh, Kip showing up with a Helioptile, who does not see much use um, in modern LCUU. Um, and a Squirtle, who is a uh, pretty niche mon in itself. Jox, mons-wise, a bit more standard. Um, for those of you who may not have been following LCUU recently, Tortuga in particular has been having um, quite a moment, uh, had been having quite a moment in quarter one of 2022. Um, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if it's able to keep that up in Q uh, Q2. Things are less favorable to it with the return of Gunker, but that's neither here nor there. We'll just kind of hop into the game. Um, let me actually, first, before we hop into the game, I'm just kind of looking at matchup wise. Um, you know, the both of the smashers, both of the player's smashers are theoretically checked by the opposing uh, Cottonies. Um, you know, uh, Jox's Spritzy is theoretically scary, but um, Diglett um, and Stunky should be able to handle that. Um, for Kip on uh, Jox's side, he's rocking a no, not a no Panda squad. Um, so. Uh, gunk shot panda in particular is very good this game um, on Kip's side uh, Maggie always a threat um, but can be uh, set up upon it's uh, matchup wise there's nothing too um, too notable in terms of s this person just loses uh, to the other uh, mon but um, definitely a lot of threats on both teams we're just gonna gonna hop into the game now um, as we see Panda lead standard from Kip um, and, and the Spritzy on Jox's side. Uh, actually, sp screen Spritzy, which is very odd. You don't um, see that very often at all. It's going to set up a reflect as Kip went to his Stunky. Sentry uh, is going to come in on the Sludge Bomb, take that fairly well. Um, and set up rocks as Kip goes to the Cottony. Stunky comes in on the knockoff, perhaps trying to prevent the defog, but either, either way, Stunky comes into Cottony fairly fine. Um, and he's going to eat the knockoff, reveals to be Life Orb. Uh, doesn't necessarily reveal if it's physical or not, but now it does. Um, as Kip goes to his own Stunky, whose Berry Juice pops, and Kip gets off a defog, removing that screen and those rocks set up by Jox. Um, now we're just having a battle with Stunkies. Um, Jox goes for the crunch there as opposed to the play rough. Um, which does good damage, but obviously not quite enough. Um, and tries to catch Kip's Stunky with the Sucker Punch as Kip goes to his Diglett. Then Kip makes the, um, you know, normal play of uh, trying to predict a switch in to uh, his Diglett. Um, and doubles out to his panda, who eats a crunch from the Stunky. Jox was trying to throw away his Diglett for some reason. Um, I mean, he doesn't have a great switch into it, to be fair. Um, especially with uh, Sandshrew having taken um, some chip damage, as it has. Um, but, yeah, so I guess that was Jox's thinking. Kip just kind of forgot uh, that chip damage. Because uh, EQ basically was a kill there. Um, yeah. Anyway, Panjam's going to come in on the crunch, eat the play rough. Without the life orb, that's not really that big a threat, but is forced to take a ton of damage between the play rough and the aftermath after killing the, um, after killing the Stunky. Uh, Spritzy comes out and sets up a, uh, light screen this time rather than the reflect as Kip opts to go for the knockoff and then is exploded on. Um, the next turn. Cottony tries to encore the Diglett into Stealth Rocks, but is unsuccessful. Kip, um, I don't know 
why the fire blast on that occasion um, it m only marginally does better against like sand true um, than sludge bomb does but I mean I guess that makes it I, like you weren't to it KOing the sand true with it so if you were gonna predict a sand true I think you dark pulse there um, and if not I think sludge bombs just the better option but um, you know, Fire Blast doesn't do much damage at all, and uh, Snuggy goes down to the Dazzling Gleam. Um, as Diglett's going to come out, and Cottony's going to set up the Memento on the Diglett for his Tortuga. Um, Kip plays this part really weird. Um, you know it's going to smash. Um, you, you know it's going to smash. It might attack. Um, you know, in a prediction type thing, but he goes Helioptile, which again is, which actually is fine because Tortuga is slower than Scarfed Helioptile. Um, unfortunately, the light screen's up, so the Thunderbolt probably doesn't kill, particularly if it's, um, particularly it's Eevee Light. So, uh, Kip, realizing that after the fact, has to U-turn out, which does quite a bit, probably not Eevee Light, seeing that type of damage. He goes out to his Squirtle here, rather than his Cottony. Um, rather than his Cottony here. Um, and, sa and sacks it to the Rock Blast. It does get a ton of hits. Kip's Squirtle is, um, yeah, maximum five hits. So that was kind of unfortunate for Kip, but um, it was likely to it could. Regardless, Kip is forced to revenge with the uh, Helioptile. Um, but that sequence was just very weird. He decided not to go to his Cottony. I could only assume that it didn't have Encore. I found out later that it did. He just played it weird. And then, on top of that, I found out Jax's Tartuka wasn't Eevee, wasn't, uh, Eevee Light at all, but it was Mental Herb. So, I guess Kip's play worked out, but Jax, knowing that, should have smashed again on the Helio. Knowing that, uh, it li- <laughs> Uh, on the Helio when Kip switched out, but he didn't, and like it was just, it was it was so it was so confusing watching this game, particularly this end game, and even there, like Helio's forced to use the electric move, like I think going Sand True there was perfectly fine. Perhaps you don't get another chance to shell smash on people, but we know it's Mental Herb, so maybe you do. And, I don't know, it's uh, very odd, you don't outspeed the Helio anyway, so I guess it's fine, but it's just just a very, very weird sequence of plays um, there, um, and I, I, I didn't quite understand it at the time, I still don't quite get it, but it makes a little bit more sense. Jax Santru goes for the Rapid Spin, Cottony Mementos here for some reason, I guess rather than just clicking the Giga Drain. Um, perhaps it doesn't have that. I mean, that's that's reasonable. Maybe it's Dazzling Gleam. But either way, I think you attack, because if you're Encore, which he apparently was, um, like, what's Jock's gonna do? Unless his, jo unless his Sand True's Poison Jab, it's not killing the Cottony. Um, so you can just kind of attack until whatever. Magby cannot set up on Cottony because it gets Encored into either Belly Drum or, um, I think it's encored into Belly Drum or gets encored into the Mach Punch, which does no damage to Cotton. Um, so, so that was weird. And then Cotton, he just mementos for no reason. He's forced to go out to Diglett, who then goes for a Sucker Punch on the Stealth Rock. Um, sucker Punch doesn't do hardly any damage anyway. Pops Santru's Berry Juice. Eats the knockoff. Santru's back to neutral speed. Um, we, knowing that Santru's not Eevee Light, it... Uh, cannot take any chip or the surf is gonna kill it with from helio um, Magby has a, a small chance to live surf from full um, and cannot kill helio without setting up um, with mock punch but it can't set up on Diglett obviously uh, so Kip basically wins via surf um, at the end here it was just a very very weird end game um, where I think both players had opportunities to win the game and both players just played really weird um,
but Kip picked up the victory for the first win of LPL 8. Um, and I'm going to pause it while I load up the next replay. All, all right, in our second game of uh, LPL 8 Week 1 LCUU, we had uh, Reese versus Baby Boy Blues, BBB. Um, Emerald brought some pretty interesting looking teams. Um, BBB's uh, brought some pretty cool, like almost Volturn. I mean, the only two, I mean, they're only two pivots on the team, but um, I do like Hailish, um, Sh a, a Shrew quite a bit. Um, particularly paired with Coldine, it just kind of works out along with the Oddish, Growlithe, Joltik. Um, it, it's just kind of, it's just a pretty cool team. Um, a little fight week, if you ask me. A little ground week, if you ask me. Um, but but pretty cool overall. Reese over on the other hand, has brought um, fairly rarely seen Mon and Bunnelby, but Bunnelby is always a threat, particularly Scarfed, um, though Reese is not, or some reason um, and the rest of the team's fairly standard Pumpkaboo pretty good mon um, multi teams part of Joltik Joltik obviously as we know has no switch-ins um, so uh, yeah we'll just kind of hop right into it we got lead Growlithe on BBB side perhaps predicting the uh, Pancham or even better the Pumpkaboo lead tries to get a Will-O-Wisp as Reese goes to land it that's one of my favorite plays uh, <laughs> Uh, for the uh, Salandit in on Growlithe. So then it's going to go for the knockoff. Uh, knockoff Growlithe's uh, Berry Juice. Um, but is unfortunately going to get into <laughs> it. But uh, BBB is going to reveal Thief on his Growlithe and steal Salandit's own Berry Juice, which is pretty irritating as the Salandit player. Um, Salandit in particular um, is a really good Oddish check, uh, particularly if you're running Sleep Talk. So losing that was unfortunate for Reese. Goldine's going to come in on the Flare Blitz and is going to be able to freely flip turn out as she does so. Um, and Selene is going to come in on the Oddish. BBB is going to go to his Goldine on the Sludge Bomb um, and is 2-it KO'd, which is why um, Selene is pretty good. Uh, is going to threaten it back out though with the um, Diglett Alola. Pumpkaboo Super comes in and takes the Iron Head pretty well. Um, and rather than go for the Wisp, Reese wisely chooses to attack as BB tries to get a free sub up on it. I would have, if uh, on the account that Reese goes for the Wisp there rather than the Mystical Fire, which is really cool tech by the way, um, I think that ends up in a uh, kill for Diglett, unless uh, particularly if it if Reese gets flinched um, or doesn't synth up, but uh, didn't work quite work out for him um, and Growlithe's going to come in on the Giga Drain not take too much damage from that at all um, going to be able to fire off another Thief I believe nope Morning Sun's up instead I think Thief would have been really good there um, steal the Goldings Easy Light who's going to come in and flip turn out on the Oddish once again back into Salandit and Salandit's really putting on the pressure here BBB's forced to go to his Growlithe on the Flamethrower this time so um, that worked out, but it can't take another Sludge Bomb. Um, BBB knows that, makes the hard play, goes into his Diglett, forces out the Solandit. Pancham comes in the Iron Head, takes that again really well. Um, and fires off a Drain Punch on BBB's, BBB's Joltik. Joltik uh, opts to go for the Volt Switch on the Predictive Giga Drain as Reese goes to her own Joltik. And we're going to see the Volt Switch out of. Um, her as well as BBB takes this time to get his rocks up. Joltik's going to come in on the Goldeen, eat a knock, which is kind of unfortunate, but he's going to win the speed tie, get some Giga Drain chip off as Reese's going to flip turn out. In comes Bunnelby. Um, Ralph comes in to get an Intimidate off as Bunnelby reveals Quick Attack and Life Orb. Um, with Life Orb, Diglett can come in and freely revenge with an Earthquake uh, rather than Iron Head this time. Nothing could come in on two Iron Heads regardless, um, but Pump can now deal with it. Fires off the Mystical Fire and is able to take out the Joltik and um, BBB is forced to make some uh, plays here. 
smart sack of Solandit on the triple axle allows Pancham to come back in. Uh, Pancham can fire off a free knockoff here as it does so on the incoming Oddish. Um, if it's in headbutt, Oddish would die there, but it is not. Running shots out instead, and Pumpkaboo um, comes in on Strength Sap. Oddish gets up relatively healthy, but nothing can come into the Pumpkaboo's Mystical Fire, um, and Pumpkaboo is going to be able to kind of stall out uh, BBB's team uh, from here. Um, BBB can try to maybe force his uh, Santro in on a synth, but ultimately ends up just sacking the Oddish. Um, I would have loved uh, I would have loved an SD there, or a spin, um, knowing that Reese needs, um, needs the Pump Kaboo for the Diglett as like insurance, um, though Pancham is healthy enough to deal with it as well. Um, I would have loved like a spin or a, or a SD. Uh, it's not SD, but um, spin would have been cool, but it turns out it wouldn't have mattered anyway because um, the triple axle is actually um, not strong enough to take out the Pancham. Even if with e even with that third hit, Pancham would not have um, gone down. We go for an Iron Head Flinch, um, but and don't get it. And Reese is able to pick up the victory over BBB. Um, and yeah, that was game two. On to game three. All right. Next up, we've got, I know the real reason we're all here for this video, um, <laughs> is my game uh, here in week, from week one versus Albi. Um, and yeah, because it's my game, I'll be able to go a little bit more into depth on like my thought process and stuff. Um, I guess I should, you know, switch the sides and stuff. Um, so I can talk about it from how I was seeing it. I brought... Um, Dupider Sand Team. Dupe Sand is actually a kind of, um, th this construction I brought is actually fairly common, a uh, common variety of sand if you want to run dupe. Um, you'll see in the next game of week one, an another person brought a very similar construction of dupe sand. Um, Zero brought uh, construction very similar to this um, in the LCU Cup, but I decided to bring it here. Um, just in Honestly, as a bit of a, um, a change up from what I've been normally bringing, despite the fact that I've actually built almost all of the sand samples this generation, uh, I hadn't actually had sand in my regular rotation in, since, like, Natu, Frillish era. Um, I think the last one that was even seeing minor use for me was the... Um, it's the uh, Larvesta Squirtle Sand uh, that I built a, far, a long time ago, but all of those, but now the Larvesta's gone, that was out as well. So I decided to um, you know, switch it up here against Albi. Albi is someone who I feel like I never beat. He knocked me out of um, the winner's bracket in the LCU Cup and then later knocked me out of the actual uh, tour. Um, as he's now, as of time of recording, currently in the losers uh, bracket finals um, of the LCU Cup, but uh, I, I don't think I, I think I didn't beat him in previous LPLs. I just have a hard time beating Helby, so uh, <laughs> like I, I wanted to change things up, use something I I don't normally bring. Um, I think I did try to sand him a couple LPLs ago with Snover. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, this game uh, actually plays out, I think, in the best possible way for me. I think I really got away with one um, on this. Uh, looking at his team, we've got some very threatening Pokemon. Joltik, in particular, pretty threatening. Um, I have a Salandit who can come in on Bug and Grass moves, but um, gets Volt switched on. Um, like it, I don't have. So, uh, it's also the only thing that actually threatens to Oko, the Joltik. Um, Archon's kind of scary, uh, particularly if, um, particularly since my Sandshrew doesn't have the, um, doesn't have like a rock move or anything. Uh, so, and and in particular, Meowth is very annoying. Fake Out can stall out my Sand turns. Um, I don't have a normal resist really. I mean, I have Lilip, but Lilip can also get U turned on. Um, 
So Meowth is very scary. And I think I get away with one here because I um, lead Dupider, actually. Getting into the game, I lead Dupider. Whoops. We do not want music on. Um, but I lead Dupider into the Joltik lead. Now, if he just led Meowth, it's a free fake out. Um, and I'm really on the back foot. I don't want my dupe taking that much damage, but um, Albi thinks he has a really good lead matchup here, um, but my dupe hider is packing the mirror coat, which um, is pretty much a guaranteed kill here, uh, because I know Joltik can't kill me in one hit. Um, I, I click that as he bolt switches out, does fair, does an okay amount of damage, dupe actually eats that quite well, um, and I'm able to claim the goldine immediately off the rip. Um, and turn two, rather than going out to back out to his Joltik or out to his Meowth or something, he decides to go Archon, um, and he decides to set rocks here as I actually stay in and just click Surf. Um, I, uh, with having taken as much damage as I have, I can't like switch into Pancham or anything uh, later, and um, I figure I might as well just fire off a Surf in case he, um, you know, tries to go for, her. In, in case he does make this rocks play or tries to U-turn or, or so, something like that, um, and I get the play right, and I, Dupe Hider just immediately claims two kills, and I don't, uh, again, I don't think that, I think things have gone as well as they possibly can for me, um, to this point, um, I, two quick kills, uh, Goldeen, um, always a very solid Pokemon, Archon, like, like I said, fairly threatening um, just in general and Dubotter was able to claim to just off the rip uh, with minimal like I like that their rocks up on my side of the field but I do have a sand true he does have a pumpkin who can uh, pretty effectively spin block but um, like I'm in such a good position after that and I don't feel like in most ways this game plays out that I am in such a good position but um, I decided to just sack the Dewfighter here to the Thunderbolt um, and head out to my Salandit. Uh, I thought about going for the knockoff here, but seeing as he does not have a fire switch in, um, I just went right for the fire blast. Um, it does a reasonable amount of damage to Pancham. Uh, not wanting to risk getting Zen Headbutt, or really not even wanting to take a knockoff uh, with Salandit. I went out to Mime Jr. Mime Jr. is faster than Pancham, it's always going to outspeed. Um, and it Resist that Zen headbutt takes it very well. Alvi's gonna go out to his punk. I thought about clicking Shadow Ball here, but I felt Psychic was better. Did a little bit less than I would have liked to the Pumpkaboo. Um, so I decided to throw off Shadow Ball this turn. Um, not a huge fan of that play either, as Meowth is now in for free. I don't want my mime taking the fake out here, so I go to my hippo, get up sand, I'll have. Sandshrew to be able to outspeed and threaten this Meowth afterwards, which is dope. I am Smooth Rock because 8 turns of sand is so threatening. Um, and Hippo's going to take the um, Fake Out. You can tell I'm not EVO here. I'm actually very offensive Hippo. I'm like um, 17 attack on this and 12 speed. Uh, very minimal defensive investment here. Um, so that Fake Out does quite a bit. And Meowth here uh, is going to just U-turn out. Um, thought about setting rocks, thought about clicking crunch, but I just went to go for the earthquake as Albi goes Joltik and I get, um, a very favorable, uh, roll, or not favorable roll, that's just like the main roll, but it does important damage because, uh, as we can see after my hippo is giga drained, um, Joltik, uh, and sand goes through and everything, Joltik is at the exact amount of damage that Hippo's earthquake did. And my sand true happens to have the same attack stat as my hippo, so I know that um, this earthquake will kill, um, and I won't have to take any chip with my sand true. So that's beautiful. Um, Albi goes out to his pump. Uh, rather than go for the knock, I just decide to go into my Salandit on the Giga Drain. Takes that really well. Bear juice is gonna pop, um, and I get another free fire blast, uh, which is gonna take out the pump kaboo. Um, out comes Meowth, and I think, um, and it's going to go for the Water Pulse here, and I think I'll be, again, messed up here, um, 
by not clicking fake out. I don't think Selandit Selandit does, doesn't die to the fake out, so you get to waste a, another sand turn, and I can't reset the sand after this. Uh, not only that, revealing the dark pulse means I uh, would have been very surprised to see it uh, hit my sand true um, the next turn. So he, but he does go for the water pulse, and it is able to take out my Selandit. But I do have another sand turn. Um, as a result of that, that I can come in, um, and I think I opt to rapid spin here because I know my, yeah, I opt to rapid spin here because I know the sand is running out. He probably does not want to risk, uh, Meowth here, um, dying to the thing because Meowth is really his best way to win here. So I go for the rapid spin. He goes to his pan jam does uh, rapid spin gives me enough chip to have earthquake kill um, and now that I outspeed the meow it can only go for fake out it can't kill me with the water pulse because I'm faster um, and I'm able to um, win the game I think if I'll be faked out on the slant and wasted that last sand turn I wouldn't have been able to get up this rapid spin probably um, or at least not done so with as much health as I was able to um, and Meowth may have been able to, um, may have been able to do the game depending on how well, it would have made it a, a lot tougher for me at least, the end game, depending on how well I play the Little Leap, um, and Mime Junior, um, versus it. So, I, I, I really think I got away with one here, um, but, you know, I'll take it. Uh, it was, it felt good to grab the win and I'm gonna bring you the last game of week one in just a second here alrighty it's the last game of week one now um, we've got Quinn versus bag of tricks um, Quinn actually did fairly well in the uh, LCU cup um, getting through at least a couple rounds before being knocked out but um, they're the LCU play for the scrubs um, they're up against the um, and against Bag of Tricks. Like I said, uh, like I mentioned previously during my game, they brought a, uh, another variant of Dupe Sand. Um, you can see they have the same, you know, Sand Core and then Salandit Dupe Hider. Um, but rather than Mime Jr. and the Leap, they opted for Dick Little Lola, who very threatening and under Sand with that Sand Force boost and the King of LCU Pancham. Um, so overall, like, you know, very similar squads, probably a little worse against things like Corpfish than mine is, than mine was, um, but, you know, uh, definitely a very competent bag of tricks over on the other hand has brought a pretty, um, pretty interesting looking Volt Turn team, uh, Volt Turn and at least, uh, Elicid Volts and Goldian Turns, uh, we've got two Electric Communities, um, in gold in Goldine and Golet uh, to protect the Shellos, um, who uh, is definitely a big problem for a sand team. Uh, being able to break that, particularly with no stab, that is super effective, um, can be very difficult. So um, the Shellos definitely a major player here. Oddish is another um, major threat to sand, though. Salandit makes that matchup much easier uh, so we'll just kind of hop right into it um, this Quinn also opts to lead Dewbiter this time against Goldeen. Goldeen's just gonna flip turn out. I would have probably knocked first but um, didn't want to eat the Giga Drain as Oddish comes in fairly safely. So Landit's gonna come out on the Stun Spore this time. Stun Spore is actually good tech because I often run um, Sleep Talk on my Salandit's uh, but Salandit's gonna get out of there with the Overheat Eject Pack out on the Goldeen, Alola's going to come in that Earthquake does a lot of damage to the Shellos, it's forced to um, recover as Dewbiter is going to come in and fire off an Icy Wind on the incoming Stunky, I don't know why Stunky was the play there um, I mean it was coming in on the Sum Giga Drain but I, I, I feel like Oddish is always a safer option there um, but uh, Stunky is then going to go down to the Surf um, and uh, Dewbiter proving uh, to be a problem uh, in these early, in, in week one at least. Um, so is going to come back in on the Oddish, um, fire off a Sludge Wave, does okay damage to the Shellos, um, 
and uh, we're going to have dupyter inverses allocate. Uh, rather than vaulting out or trying to vault out, uh, Trix makes a good double out into Goldeen on an expected hippo, and that's exactly what happens. Um, I think believe this hippo is Eviolite, um, and it is. This hippo is Eviolite, so he doesn't have to worry about uh, too many turns of sand. Um, but uh, that hippo is definitely bulky boy as it sets rocks on the knockoff of there, the aggressive play from Quinn, but it worked out for them. Um, as uh, Goldeen's gonna flip turn out of an incoming Pancham, and uh, yeah, flip turns out of the incoming Pancham. Um, Shellos is gonna come in. Now this Pancham is not Mold Breaker, um, which is actually what allows the Shellos to come in <laughs> um, and not be worried about things. Uh, it doesn't have to worry about eating a knockoff here because it, you know, can't be knocked off. So Pancham is forced to parting shot out um, instead. Which is fine, as it allows Dewpowder coming for free, but Shellos does get that, that free recover. Um, Oddish is going to come in on the Dewpowder. It's Giga Drain. Um, Dewpowder applying lots of pressure, um, but Slandit always able to come in on an Oddish. Great play by Trix to bring in the Golette here. Um, who's going to be able to fire off a. I actually set up Stealth Rocks. It's not Scarf Go. It's either Scarf Rocks or a non Scarf Golette, which is not. Um, Neither of which are very common, um, but it does set rocks there. That'll very much help the Salandit and Dupiter uh, match up for him. So, um, not bad at all. Oddish comes in on a slack off, and uh, with Salandit, you know, para then having to take these rocks, that's pretty good. It also does not have a uh, berry juice, so you know that this chip is going to stick, likely, as Oddish is going to get all the way back up to full with the strength sap. Salina gets full parrot and I believe it gets sacked here. I probably nope. Uh, Dupider comes in, takes down rocks damage, eats the skull fairly well, to, avoids the burn as well. Um, and another double out to Pancham this time on the Oddish. Shellos comes in as Pancham is gonna fire off a knockoff again, not mold breaker, which I believe is a misbuild. Um, and Neither knockoff nor Zen is really doing much. Parting shots out and forced parting shot out into the Dewpider, who is very low now. Um, and is really forced to Giga Drain, so Trix can go out to the odd. It actually goes for the Bug Buzz. Um, very surprised to have seen that Bug Buzz, but it pays off huge um, for, for Trix there. I mean, for Quinn there. Um, and and uh, as Oddish is able to, as Oddish is taken out. Um, and and Dupider is really putting in the work here. Um, he's even going to be saved here as uh, Quinn thinks I can get off a rapid spin at some point. As uh, not with Oddish gone, he can sack the Salandit pretty freely. In comes Diglett, um, and Diglett's earthquake is going to be enough to two the KO the Shellos after rocks, um, and it's basically all over. But the shouting from here, Elekid comes in. Elekid's going to be able to um, threaten to kill the Diglett at least, but Hippos very able to come in. Brick Rick comes out. I don't like Brick Rick on uh, Elekid. Uh, cross Drop is um, better if you're going for the fighting move, if you ask me. Uh, screens are not really a thing here. Um, but yeah, the Dewbiter put in a ton of work and it's finally sacked off as Sand is set up. Golding goes down to it um, and it's going to be Sand True to clean up from here. Knockoff. Um, it was Scarf Rocks. Um, interesting set um, and obviously Sandra was going to be able to outspeed the Elekid and um, Elekid also wasn't going to be able to get through Hippo at that point so Quinn picks up another Victory Sand very good at least in our, our Q1 meta that we are now sadly leaving but um, that is all of week one and if you want week two I, you know I might record week two we'll see alright I, I probably will but um, I'll see you next time bye bye